to deliver his speech within seven minutes. Thank you all for ladies and gentlemen. So just because it's a reality, almost all country is legalizing tobacco. It doesn't justify, it doesn't justify the claim we don't ban tobacco. Because otherwise we would lose, I'm sorry, right? <laughs> but please be objective and neutral. Like what kind of principle we use behind it is important to participate. So what we will tell you on this side of the house is that under the status quo, okay, we see that tobacco causes that are lots of harm towards the individual and towards society. At the other state, we should ban tobacco. This is a Christian outside the house. So I will talk about three things in my speech. Firstly, what we think is individual are unable to make a rational decision with regard to tobacco. And secondly, I will talk about a specific harm. The inherent harm of tobacco is so significant to the extent the government should limit the freedom of individuals to access to it. And lastly, I will talk about why we think the government have justification for the social engineering in this instance. Before that, clarification. Uh, we are talking about all countries around the world. We are happy to ban tobacco in any country. And we are also happy to ban selling or buying the using possession of tobacco, we are, aggress we, are, we are taking aggressive stance on this case. So having said that, first point, why we think this is almost impossible for human beings to make the Russian decision with regard to tobacco. So there, are, there are several reasons why. First of all, because we think that as human beings, by the nature of human psychology, we have an optimistic biases. What do you mean by that? Because we think, in generally speaking, in the rational characters of human beings, we underestimate the long-term risk over the tangible benefit of short-term. This is the inherent nature of human beings, right? So that's why we are, even if we are on diet, we are trying to decrease your weight, we still have, like, you know, feel like eating, uh, you know, sweet snack, and we cannot refuse that kind of idea, right? We think that's issues with the human beings are fundamentally have strong biases in the short-term benefit over the long-term risk, right? We think on secondary also, we think these kind of the better short-term benefit is quite tangible. You can feel so much better, you can feel very comfortable by smoking. You know what kind of consequences you can get, and we think that's but we think actually it's not immediately affect or the product affect your life in a better product matter. We think it's not something um, like you know good thing to do. So and last we uh, certainly also we think we think that problem of inherent nature of tobacco is include the chemical nicotine was unable us to make a rational decision. Why? Right? Because nicotine have have strong influence and you know influence on the neural pathway that you and make you react in a specific way when you don't access your tobacco in a in certain period of time, right? In that situation you, you are not genuinely free to opt out of the just choices in the first place, right? Even if you claim that you are free to opt into that choice, but you you can't opt out of that choice, even if you don't want to, even if you are addicted to tobacco. Because these kind of chemical substances causes a specific like new like neural reaction within your brain, within your body, and so that is not something like we are our rationality can diffuse you. On that situation, there is no such uh, a way to reduce the pressure, sit. And also we say, this damage is also for three. It's not, it's a, even if those damages accumulate in your body, you can't realize it through your direct experiences. On that situation, there's no meaningful way for you to realize what kind of harm, or to what extent the harm is accumulated in your body. And the consequences, you are always delayed to deal with that harm, or to pre take the preventive measure to stop that harm from being materialized. And so for those four reasons, we think tobacco should be banned, and because tobacco is uh, unable us to opt out and also reduce the pressure to smoke. Yes. So, but the reality is that due to education, due to mass campaigning, telling people how harmful tobacco is, a lot of people can st can stop smoking. I've been stopping smoke. I've I've successfully stopped smoking <laughs> seven times over the last five years. <laughs> seven times. This proof is on our side. And actually, I saw you smoking two hours ago, guys. You know, they only he proved to you that tobacco is so addictive. It's almost very difficult for the average human beings to reduce the pressure. Thank you for. Um, Because this is a tangible like evidence 
that said, you know, you are like your damage is, is accumulated in body in long term. So that as a consequence, it certainly leads to lung cancer, right? Because lung cancer is so problematic for several reasons. First reason is always irreversible. Even if you recognize that you are get cancer, you can't recover and you will you will almost certainly die, right? This irreversible harm oh, is caused. And secondly also with the pain that's so inhumane, right? Because as at the end, like as a terminal cancer for instance, you are you are, you are suffering from extreme pain, like right? before your death. Like right? you are almost unable to uh, like, Diffuse the, the pressure. You are always in, like you are always in pain for 24 hours a day, right? And also in a painkiller, so those kind of stuff, it can somehow mitigate your heart, but it's not like like remove the root cause of that problem. It means that you are almost equivalent being tortured by like, the cancer cells, and so that you can't opt out situation. Which in that situation, which is a good enough reason for state to intervene to stop those victims from being tortured by those uh, those illnesses. And third, I'm going to talk about the principle of social, uh, social engineering of the government. We think of this side of how we, uh, we have shown to you why we think is there's a potential reason why the government should intervene. But also we think the reasons why we think the state, lower state, is also the cre uh, to create a sustainable society, no thank you, to like, uh, in normal society. Because in the under the state school, so far, right here, there are not that much huge problem with you know, allowing tobacco, right? But in the state school, we are specifically talking about different contexts, right? Aging society, booming corporation, lack of like resources, tower towers like social welfare or like um medical care. On that situation, if you put yourself in a way and you choose to be cancer and then stay in the hospital for a very long time and then taking away the limited resources, otherwise other people in the society can access to it. On that situation, there is a huge harm to society and it's also we see this kind of balance is not something sustainable. We already can see, already, already see under the state scope. On that situation, we see for the future perspective, Future prosperity of humanism or future sustainability of society within a state should preemptively stop individual from harming the society in long term because the state is the only of the who can do so because of the corrective action problem of individual. But the individual have no capacity and incentive to care for the entire society. On that situation, state should do that to in the sake of the future generation and for the smokers themselves. For those reasons, we're very proud to propose. Prime Minister, next we'd like to call up a leader of opposition to deliver his speech within seven minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, like if we ban tobacco, my partner is going to be totally unproductive. So we just need it for our preparation. And we, we did it in the smoking area, by the way. Uh, it was very effective. So uh, our stance is we really quit. So with controlling environment, uh, we can actually regulate the action to the extent that it does not harm to the others. We can embrace those people's choice. We're okay with like people have people smoking, people drinking a lot, people consuming drugs, whatever, as long as it fits the principle that we are pushing, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we have uh, basically a bit of a model. So let me explain that. Firstly, so we introduced a mandatory separation of like smoking area and non-smoking area, like in all public spaces, including company or like restaurant, school, street, station, everywhere. Secondly, so we increase the number of smoking area in cities massively to the extent that the people that do not have to smoke tobacco on, on the road in unregulated places. Three, we uh, still impose some tax on that tobacco, 
but I think the amount of tag is going to be less than the current amount of tags. The reason why is that we're not using this task for the discouragement. We're just using a task for the sake of paying for additional like, medical expenses that Hiroki has talked about. Also, we need some money to facilitate those people's choice, as I talked about, like smoking area. Right? We need that money. We just it is legitimate for those, you know, which for the state to make those smokers to pay for the price that the facility that they're using. For uh, we publish some health information about tobacco in the, in, the, in the way that people can compare the benefit and harm and any time. And also, at the moment you want to quit it, government offers you a great medical treatment so that there, there won't be a huge obstacle to quit smoking. Five, uh, we still have an age, of, like, age of consent regulation, minors are not allowed to do that. Six, uh, when people smoke within the household, I think this issue must be up to the individual like, private discussion. However, when at the moment situations like willful negligence of the sampling family members just happen, for example, if you smoke a lot and let your little kid have a, like lung cancer at the end of the day, we think we can punish those individuals in a very different principle, which is domestic violence. We think still we can like, uphold the principle of freedom of the choice. Um, Two arguments. Firstly, why freedom choice is really awesome. Secondly, you have to talk about black market. Before that, rebuttal. So, Prime Minister talked about, you know, the rational decision making is actually distorted. You can't like quit smoking, it's extremely difficult to make that decision. We don't think so. You can stop it, right? Like he, he did it like for seven times as he told us. And so many people, not like him, successfully quit it smoking. For example, when you got a little children in a white stomach, maybe it's a time that you can quit smoking. People can successfully carry it out. Also, when your girlfriend asks you to quit smoking because she hates it, maybe you can do that. Also, you actually feel deep, de you know, really dizzy, or you actually feel really bad about smoking tobacco. Right when you when you're about to get a get a call, then you feel like oh I really want to quit it. I don't have any feeling like that because I never smoked though. But this thing is actually happening. So people can quit tobacco, and there is the anti chemical type substances that facilitate help people to quit the job, like nicotine or other medicines. Second rebuttal, they talked about you know you have to be responsible for the other people in the society when you got hospitalized, actually indirectly harming other people. There are so many choices that are indirectly harming other people. Right, you're just coming here instead of working for your family or helping your little children to get. Like, you know, cram, uh, cram school, like homework done or stuff like that, right? At the moment, you have to make decision. You're sacrificing something else at the same time. So this trade-off always exists. So when the, if this principle exists, people cannot make any decision whatsoever. As long as you're making your own choice, you're entitled to be responsible to that. And other people have their own like, uh, responsibility to take care of themselves. And maybe state can help those individuals, but you shouldn't do that. Maybe not my constructive. So why freedom choice is really a good idea? Firstly, that you can actually pursue whatever you want. So because you have awesome body integrity, so you can enjoy it for like a short term, like risky lifestyle. Like you can actually work in the coal mining, like a very classic example. Also, you can eat a lot, like or you can drink a lot, or you can enjoy combat sport, or you can go to like some Amazon or dangerous place and see like a dangerous snakes biting you possibly. So uh, because people are consenting to it, that we are talking about the responsible adults. They're not talking about the children. For some individual, Madam Speaker, the choosing life, like choosing to live long, means nothing, right? They want to prioritize a short-term life, life at the moment. For example, if government can say, you know, you need to be healthy for every for like 24 or 7, then government actually forcing you to eat Goya Champloo because it's really healthy, right? You actually hate the government, right? Sometimes you actually have the feeling that you need to eat really fatty food like Big Mac or, you know, steaks or Kadage Porto or whatever it is, Mr. Speaker. State does not have any right to intervene to the private choice of those individuals. The distinction we draw from the, like, for example, like, uh, what was that? Mandatory medical checking or uh, 
like uh, compulsory education because in those kind of cases we clearly know that it's necessary and otherwise people are automatically going to be harmed, Mr. Speaker. But in this case, it is actually vague that whether you're going to receive a harm because like some smokers live really long, like you know, some people die at the age of 80 still loving smoking, Mr. Speaker. We think this effect of smoking itself is really controversial and state is not entitled to make any value judgment in this place. That's why we can embrace the freedom of choice. That's why there is no way that the state can actually enter and say, your action is unhealthy, that's why we're entitled to take away that option. Some, and there are un, un, some unhealthy options are available and we enjoy it, and state must embrace it because it's act, this is a way that makes people life really good. Second point, black market, two analysis. First of all, the, the black market is going to be controlled by non-government actor, which means the youngsters or illegal actor. It's going to be a big budget for those individuals, and the, so, I think so many consumers are going to there, going there, although it is an illegal choice because those people have no other option to consume tobacco. It's actually empowering youngsters. It's a horrible thing. That might be some organized crime. Second of all, in case you get disease from illegal smoking, what's happening? Just like the case of illegal drug consumption, Right in so many countries, you can't actually go to the hospital so casually. You have to be afraid of being criminalized, or being punished, or being socially segregated. So you have to suffer at the end of the day much longer than the current situation. We think it's much more horrible than the previous uh, than the situation right now. For all those reasons, we embrace the freedom of choice. Thank you. As the uh, government bench, we believe that, in fact, in the United States, tobacco is the third, third or fourth main reason why um, a lot of people die in the first place. We believe that tobacco is affecting a lot of our population, not only in liberal countries, but also throughout the world, which is why we'd like to strongly propose this motion and actually ban tobacco throughout the world. My main argument would be why we should restrict um, individual choice in this particular situation by giving an example, particularly in um, countries where cultural relativism is actually the norm. But before I do that, I want to um, uh, refute the previous speaker. So in the, fir uh, in the first argument, the, main, uh, the first argument was about why freedom of choice, right? Body inter and into integrity and like, things like karage and stuff like that. But we believe that the reason why tobacco is like uniquely dangerous is because there is a detrimental effect to the individual, right? We, as the government side, we strongly believe in the importance of life over choice. This, the opposition side was like, oh, we don't really care about life. So they were willing to kill these people. But we believe that we should like totally like take care of the life of these people. Where uh, we don't we value life more than their choices, which is why we believe that the opposition side is actually killing these individuals. And second of all, their example about like karage and like, things like that, like like that is totally irrelevant. There's no harm. Like why why did he actually compare karage and like <laughs> smoke in the first place? I, I can't really understand that. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> it's actually leading fatty liver or like fatty in some internal organs if we eat karage like hundred okay. times. Okay, okay, okay. Then what's the what's the what's the rank of people dying as a result of eating too much karage? Like I, I I've never heard of that, right? And then you ask the third main reason why people um die is tobacco. We can clearly see a significant difference here, and we think that smoke. Okay, they're saying like okay. Man mandatory check and things like that, but we believe that 
even if mandatory checks take place and take place, there are like, okay, so people figure out that there's like lung cancer, it's white, right? But then we believe, under their paradigm, because it's their choice, people will um, believe that, some people will be like, okay, I don't want to die, so I'll stop. But some people will just continue like taking tobacco, right? We can clearly see that there, this problem will not be solved even if we have mandatory checks. And they were saying like, um, smoking in the first place, the effect is like not, it's controversial, the effects of smoke, but we don't think so because it's medically proven by the American Medical Association and all other like medical associations throughout the world. And second of all, they were talking about black markets, right? Like gangsters and things like that. But first of all, we believe that drugs, like um, black market drugs, are much more profitable. So we believe that the profit will continue to be, of course there, there might be a certain degree of like, um, profit for tobacco black market, but we believe that the majority of the profit will continue to be from drug, drug areas, like drug, drug black markets. And second of all, we believe that the main like purpose to ban tobacco in the first place is to decrease the number of smokers, right? We believe that this purpose will be accomplished through this um, uh, motion because at least a certain decrease will happen as a result of um, proposing this motion, right? Of course, some people might go through, through black markets, but at least a certain percentage will decrease. And because um, we actually ban tobacco, we believe like like drugs in Japan, for example, there are like rehabil rehabilitation like opportunities, right? Because we ban tobacco, we'll be able to provide these kind of re rehab re rehab rehab areas for these people who have tobacco issues. And so before I move on to my uh, point, I want to like extend my partner's arguments. Um, through um, rebutting the refutes that the other side gave. They were talking about like um, how, wait, what was the plan to say? Okay, I forgot, sorry, I forgot, so I'll give my point. So why do we believe that we really need, a, we really need to restrict individual choice and freedom in this particular situation, right? This is because there are some countries where cultural relativism is the norm. For example, in Sierra Leone, where there's child labor, in Somalia, where piracy is like a huge thing, and the country's in chaos. In Saudi Arabia, I think it was Saudi Arabia, but where polygamy, like um, one, 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 uh, like things like that, polygamy, right? We believe that under this kind of situation, the things that usually individuals should be entitled to do not happen. Freedom is not given to these people due to like misrepresentation of certain areas due to this cultural relativism, right? So what should happen? We believe that in this situation, people don't have the human rights that they should be entitled to, which is why we believe that tobacco should be banned in this particular situation. Why do we think so? Because, for example, because they don't know the real health harm of education, because they don't know and are unaware of the potential dangers of secondhand smoking, and because they don't, they can't make a legitimate choice because religion is so influential in these countries. We believe that in, this, in these kind of situations, it is normal and crucial for the government to educate people and provide the ins and outs of why tobacco is bad, why tobacco, what kind of detrimental harm the tobacco would bring. And which is why, as a result, we believe that we should securely ban um, tobacco in these kinds of areas. Of course, my uh, partner was talking to you about liberal countries in general, right? How it's so rational to be able to, um, how do you call that? Like ban the tobacco in these areas. But also, we, in addition to that, we believe that areas where cultural rel relativism is taking place should be so significant in order to enhance individual freedom. And this kind of like, uh, this kind of thing, the government should be taken care of. So what did we provide to you today? We talked to you about how, why the freedom of choice should be given to um, people, uh, like the freedom of choice should be given to the government in this case because we value life so much and we value, um, of course we value the choice, but in this case we value a lot about the life. And second of all, we talked about how the black markets will, might be a problem, but with, Actually, the main goal of decreasing a certain amount of people will actually happen. And overall, we believe that in countries where it's kind of controversial, like in cultural relativistic countries, it will be attained. Thank you.
member of government. Next, we'd like to call up a member of opposition to deliver his speech within seven minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, I actually restarted smoking because I chose to be friends with other fellow smokers in my company. And that's why I think I actually actively decided that the benefits I can get by communicating with my bosses is much larger than the potential benefits that I can get in the long term future, which is by like, living 10 years longer. Living 10 years longer when I'm very, as fat as this probably means nothing. It's probably <laughs> <laughs> and that's the decision that I choose to make. As the speaker, if adults consent to such kind of risks and benefits, I think that's a valid choice. And if it's done in a way that is controlled, I think that's a, something the state should uphold. So I'm going to talk about two things. Firstly, I'm going to talk, talk about the calculus of adults. Secondly, I'm going to talk about the comparison. Is it better to, uh, to legalise this? Under, con under state control or leave it to individuals to go underground and consume whatever tobacco they want. But before going into it, let me rebut this argument about cultural relativ relativism happening in places like Syria. Now, first of all, uh, they talk talking about how people are religious. Now, I don't really think that any religion teaches you that you should smoke, so I think that is a bit out of the to begin with. But we think in these country, com uh, countries, you can't, you probably can't control just by saying you ban it, uh, Mr. Speaker. So I, I think that's out of the state. I think also we can put education on these people if the state really can control. Provide them information. Provide them, no, sit down, why your religion, uh, information about right, why your religion is wrong. And I think if the state can ban it, ban tobacco, the state can provide these education as well. So that's that's out of the space. So let's move, let's move on, note it down, about this issue of, of um, calculuses. Because the first reason they told us why people can't genuinely consent smoking is because people, they said people prioritize the short term always, ladies and gentlemen. And we think this is wrong. A couple of examples. Why do people choose to... No, I sit down. Choose to work out in the gym, even though it's short, in the short term it's really, really hard on, on your on your body. Well, they reduce the long term benefits sometimes, and that, I think that's one example to tell you that some people can choose. Why do why do students uh, start to, uh, choose to work very hard, study very study very hard in their high schools because they know that studying very hard opens up your future, even though the future is very unclear. It's not, I mean, you're not sure what kind of job you can take and all these kind of stuff. But people can choose. And the reason why we, even no, sit down, children can choose is because we provide them information that if you don't work hard right now, if you don't start a study right, right, uh, right now, your future is going to be really bad. And similarly, right now, we are okay with, uh, with for example, the states telling you about how bad tobacco is. We're okay with states putting on like, pictures of cancer lungs on the packages of tobacco. No, sit down. And I think there already is a norm telling you that tobacco is wrong. And if people choose to smoke with this information, we think that is a valid choice. So let's move on to this issue. I don't know. Our second thing uh, on choices is, is that they didn't really give us any response to what my partner told you about how all risks potentially cause harm. We talked about how you're denying other people's rights to some extent and also you're denying, you're trading off some of your future rights at the same time. No, sit down. We have to refer to things like coal mining, 
gives you great damages uh, to, to your lungs working in coal mines. As Mr. Speaker, but you choose to work for it in return of money and these kind of things. You can choose to travel to Syria even though you know that there is a high risk of dying. Mr. Speaker, as long as this is a choice when you take uh, that doesn't harm others, we think that is a valid choice and we have put um, loads of conditions in, model, in our model to tell you why harms to others or yourself is not ha happening. Yes, sir. So, because under the state school there is a black market of hard drug, do you think we should legalize hard drug as well? Uh, yes, if it's done properly, we think in places like uh, Netherlands it's already on the move towards that. I know that it is only legalizing marijuana, we think it is fine, because we can dam uh, we, uh, we, uh, if we can put it under state control, Mr. Speaker, I think that is much better than consuming it underground, whether nobody cares about it. So let's now move on to this comparison of harms and benefits, because they told us that this is uh, tobacco smoking is harmful to society, and the reason was, there is a lot of medical theme co consumed by these people. And I told you how we can consume, uh, put out, place a little bit of tax in order to pay for what they use up, Mr. Speaker. So well, that's fine. But uh, secondly, they have told you, uh, uh, they have told you about how damage it, it causes damages to yourself, Mr. Speaker. Firstly, we think that choosing to eat a lot, choosing to eat a lot like me, causes a lot of damages, ladies and gentlemen. And I think obesity is like the fourth major reason for death in the United. United States. And I think the risks are about the same, Mr. Speaker. But I concede to it. I use up my money because I pay a lot of consumption tax for through McDonald's. So that is, I think that's not a problem here. But the thing is, Mr. Speaker, if you compare the damages, if you compare the damages of tobacco sold now and tobacco sold in the, through the underground market, we think the damages are much worse when you sell the buyers through illegal buyers. And the response we heard from them on this argument about underground selling is what that, well, hard drugs is probably going to be the biggest source of money, so that's probably going to be controlled, uh, be sold anywhere, uh, like nobody is going to buy tobacco anyway. But the thing is, if you uh, ban tobacco, tobacco seems less dangerous than uh, than hard drugs, and that's why a lot of people probably still will, ban, will, will continue buying it. The thing is, if, if you look at the example how alcohol was banned once in the United States, a lot of people still bought it because they knew alcohol may cause a lot of damage to you, right, uh, to you potentially, but then, that was, uh, but then people still bought it because they wanted it, Mr. Madam Speaker. So basically, if you buy tobacco from the, uh, from the uh, underground, the damage caused to you is going to be much worse because you don't know what's mixed in this uh, tobacco. At least when you go buy it through the state, uh, control of the state, we think that is much, uh, much better. So even that, this is an argument that stands even if people can't make rational calculuses. If people can't make rational calculuses, they probably would buy it from the illegal markets, ladies and gentlemen. But I think that is really harmful. Also, in terms of you know, the denying of choice, they told us about how nicotine is addictive. Probably the chemical substances mixed in tobacco from the black market, it's probably going to be more addictive, ladies and gentlemen. So that denies more of your choice, and that's even worse. Lastly, in terms of the size, they told us about how, well, we can decrease the number of people suffering. But the thing is, why do we, like, why can they say that automatically by choosing, by smoking, there is a lot of, a lot of damage? Why can you say everybody is harmed by smoking? A lot of people do live until the age of 80 without lung cancer. When you go to the black market, you probably will die through really hard drugs, and that's much harmful, and the size is larger. Ladies and gentlemen, for all these reasons, I still have to smoke. Thank you. Thank you, Member of Government. Next, we'd like to call up on Leader of Opposition Reply to deliver his speech within four minutes. lifestyle choice is in everywhere, Mr. Speaker. But we actually condone as our society 
because the degree of the damage that we receive from this controversial choice is not that horrible, right? We're not talking about the choice that leads automatic deaths. We're not talking about the choice that actually harms others, Mr. Speaker. The society can be more tolerant towards certain risk-involved uh, risk decision-making because everybody's value is different. Everybody should not, do not have to pursue like 100% health in your life. You can choose to associate with a like, company's member. You can choose to have extra, that extra pleasure when you feel a little bit down being scolded by your parents or because you uh, did something horrible. I don't know. So uh, our, our criteria is really simple. Firstly, it's about choice, which can facilitate that. Secondly, you have to talk about the uh, ramification, uh, which can better facilitate the protection of those people who are smoking. Uh, first of all, so what the government side has mentioned when it comes to this choice is like there are certain circumstances that people's choice might not be perfect like optimistic bias, like some chemical substances, actually, you know, real choice is a little bit crowded. But we opposition side, we accept that there is a fact that's actually true, but we told you how government treats those risks, Mr. Speaker. And still, we believe that society and state is condoning those risks, calling it a legitimate choice. Then how do we do that? So when it comes to optimistic bias, Mr. Speaker, my partner and I, they talked about, for example, coal mining, right? So there is an optimistic bias when you go in, before you engage a job of coal mining. There might be some crush, but you know, it might happen to others, not for me, Mr. Speaker. There's, there's you know, optimistically people are assessing under their logic that what state says is legitimate, Mr. Speaker. But also, you can eat a lot, right? I told you that you don't have to eat goya every day just because it's really healthy, right? And this actually against the principle of the government side. And what the current state actually tells us it's legitimate, Mr. Speaker. So we think the society is actually accepting those risks as long as it is not clearly relieving the damage to the people, right? So we're not talking about like, like compulsory education, like although we have no response, no response from that side of the house. Probably lack of literacy and the concept of mass hurts your life because it is extremely difficult to find a job out there. And we, we can presume that more, the more, more than 99% of those illiterate or like those that like, having no concept of math actually suffer in their life. That's why we're okay with those kind of uh, in the mandatory intervention. However, this is a really controversial topic. It's up to individual. It's really subjective. That state should never intervene in this field because state does not have any objective yardstick to say, you, your choice to prioritize your short-term life is horrible, right? Second one, uh, also they talked about some chemical substances, right? The, the question is, is it strong enough to fully dictate people's choice? We don't really think so. We told you there are so many circumstances that people can overcome the influence of those chemical substances. When you have a baby, when the government asks you, or when you realize that it is actually hurting your body. And government is always there to tell you there is a risk and there is a way to get rid of it, Mr. Speaker. That's why we actually, in, in the model, incorporated the mandatory information providing, also as well as that we actually provide like, you know, really easy access to the like, getting out of this smoking situation. Second rule, <coughs> Mr. Speaker, like, besides freedom of choice, we embrace it. We told you better protection of smokers. What well, my partner told you, like when America banned alcohol in, 19, uh, in 18th century or something like that, that people actually suffered because people couldn't get like, adequate medical health care. That actually situation it will be the same. Although they, they claim they want to protect the health, but they do not have any active force to stop people from smoking, Mr. Speaker. Then what we can do is just accept it and deal with that much more effectively. So this is the way that we deal with the problem. This is the way we assess the risk and the harm and benefit that involves amongst the people's decision making. This is how states should behave towards the people's decision. Be liberal. Thank you very much. Thank you for your reply speech. Next, we'd like to call up on Prime Minister reply to leave a final speech within four minutes.
So almost 20 years ago, my parents asked me to go to the hospital because my grandfather got cancer. At the first time I visited him, he, he looked so fine. He looks almost as usual, but two months later, the next time I visited him, he looks so suffering. He had, he can't like move by himself, by himself, and he very looked tired. And the next time I visited him, he was almost unconscious. He sometimes screaming up and scratching the bed and and say, "Help me! Help me!" Please kill me. Those kind of things, right? We think we, and as a consequence, he died with this miserable situation. At the very moment you started small, we don't think those individuals fully consent to that miserable death. The kind of consequences is real to you in long term. We don't think on our side of the house. We think it's good enough reason to feel comfortable is accept the kind of choices is with you irreversible and the most inhumane consequences. That's what we stand for on the side of the I will summarize this way from two aspects. First, we will talk about the principal argument. Why does it have a reason to bad it? And second, we will talk about the pragmatic uh, practicalities for how it's going to do a better society in general. So, the first thing we like to look at is they show up to the very uh, lots of like bunch of examples without analyzing why is it applicable to this motion, right? They talked about coal miner, for instance. Coal miner is completely different choice, it's a rational choice. Because you if you cannot find a word if you can't sustain your life, maybe your life will be disastrous, right? You calculate the risk and benefit in the first place. But the case of tobacco is completely different, right? How different it is. First we as I told you like the consequences are quite different from other choices. Like first we say it's also a hypo that is recent death and the difference here between Mariana or our horse, the hypo, incredibly high possibility of getting cancer, right? In that situation, we are happy to let any other thing that are involved high possibility of death, but secondly also, the quality of harm is completely different. We told you that often it imposes huge pain by cancer, and then almost is torture. Within the state, have a legitimacy to intervene, stop them, from putting themselves in the most worst way possible, right? That's what we say that their analogy is completely unequivocal and irrelevant step in the debate. And also we say, this kind of human, human beings can overcome that kind of viruses, etc., etc. that he didn't say, like, he stopped and he actively chose. Right, but the problem here is he may be like we. I think he may not really realize how chemical substances influence your decision making process. I suspect the premise of him, right, because he can't realize what kind of things going on in your body, in your mind when you make a decision, right? With him, that's why he just can't say, right? He actually chose, but the reality is different, unfortunately. So, and and also they said like you know, this human being can overcome, but the problem here, is, but first of all, they conceded that it's the division necessary for human beings to stop it. Secondly also, in the reality, we look at the case of Japan, many liberal democracies, still there are so many smokers who still want to stop but still cannot, right? Because in that situation, their assumption is simply unrealistic. As a consequence of that, we say that the rationality is not guaranteed as the choices of others, and also we think harm is so extreme and significant. That's what we think they should ban. Secondly also, the practicality. They said drug market, but drug market cannot be the reason to legalize hard drug. They didn't to respond to my POI, you think it's incredibly damaging. But on the other hand, we say that there are social reasons why, in the case of the cultural reasons, in the case of pragmatic necessary, uh, necessity from the aging society, within those kind of social reality can influence the decision by the government to stand. Finally, we say on the comparison. So they they this debate about whether or not the health versus like to like freedom of choice, but the essential part of freedom of choice is just the freedom of being like you know feel better, right? But on the other hand, we said even if number is small, what we want to represent is the very basic needs of human beings: the health and also like to be free from the uh, extreme pain and the tort after torture. For those reasons, we're a succession part of this. Thank you all debaters for your speeches.